Dinosaurs have sure changed a lot since they were first described. From giant sluggish lizards to fast and adaptable evolutionary success stories, but did you know there was once a time when they were believed to be akin to male private parts? Let's go in depth on the matter and go into detail on the earliest days of dinosaur discovery. Dinosaurs weren't exactly unknown at this time. Discoveries had been made countless centuries before the group was coined by Richard Owen in 1842. Even all the way back in 6th century Greece, philosophers like Xenophanes of Colophon recognised that some fossil shells were remains of shellfish, which he used to argue that what was at the time dry land was once under the sea. Whilst not being dinosaur fossils, they were most definitely discoveries of dinosaur bone throughout pre-modern human societies, but these finds were more than often deemed as casualties of the great biblical flood, and other societies, like in China for example, deem these finds as dragon bones which were often crushed into medicines, which still carries on to this day in parts of the country, affecting not only rare dinosaur bones, but endangered species of animals that are now at serious risk of extinction due to these medicinal benefits. But that's a story for another video. Only when people began recognising that fossils were of an organic origin did they start to be identified with, well, mixed results. The reason nowadays that paleontologists find so many bones of these ancient creatures is due to them knowing what to look for and where and how to find them. Back in the days before modern science, these fossils were not well understood or appreciated, hence why our understanding of the ancient earth suddenly erupts around the 17th century. As people knew what they were doing and knew how to find such things, it's not that fossils didn't exist before this time, it's just people weren't looking for them. Anyways, the first published dinosaur fossil, even if the discoverers didn't initially realise it, was the lower thigh bone or femur of a medium sized theropod that would be later named Megalosaurus. But of course, this was 1677, and the creature, yet alone the word dinosaur, was not yet created. A description of the fossil fragment was described and illustrated by Robert Plott, Professor of Chemistry at the University of Oxford, placing him in history as the first person to illustrate a dinosaur, or in this case, part of one. Plott actually managed to correctly identify the bone as the lower extremity of the thigh bone, or femur, of a large animal, and he recognised that it was too large to belong to any species known to be living in England at the time. Plot initially and rather sensibly classified the bone as belonging to the thigh bone of a Roman war elephant, but later changing his hypothesis to that of a giant human, such as those mentioned in the Bible. The bone has since been lost, but the detailed illustration that Plot supplied gives us the, in the modern day certainty that this was in fact a dinosaur bone. But this isn't where our story ends of course. Reading the title of this video, you would know that at one point in time, the first dinosaur bone ever formally described was named after a male private part. This is that story. Plot's engraving of the bone, now known as the Cornwell bone after where it was discovered, was used again in a book by Richard Brooks in 1763. Brooks ended up naming the specimen Scrotum humanum, rather immaturely comparing its appearance to a pair of human testicles, just goes to show how little people have changed over the centuries. Over 200 years later, paleontologist Lambert Halstead pointed out that the similarity of Scrotum humanum to a modern species name, a so-called Linnean binomian, that has two parts, was not a coincidence on Brooks's part. Linnaeus, the founder of modern taxonomy as we know it, had in the 18th century devised not only a system for classifying living creatures, but geological objects as well, meaning that according to Halstead, Brooks had deliberately used binomial nomenclature, and had in fact indicated the possible type specimen of a whole new biological genus, meaning that scrotum humanum should be considered valid. This meant that according to the rules of the International Code of Zoological Nomenclature, the name scrotum humanum in principle actually had priority over the Megalosaurus term because it was published first, and the specimen had since been attributed to Megalosaurus after its initial discovery. Brooks' understanding that the stone did not actually represent a pair of fossilised testicles was hilariously irrelevant. The only thing stopping scrotum humanum becoming valid was the date of its validation. 
The ICZN states that if a name has never been considered valid after 1899, as scrotum humanum was considered for the longest time, scrotum humanum became a nomum oblitum, which represents an invalid, forgotten name. In 1993, after the death of Halstead, his friend William Sargent submitted a petition to the ICZN to formally suppress the name Scrotum in favour of Megalosaurus. He suggested that the supposed junior synonym of Megalosaurus Bucklandi should be made into a conserved name to ensure priority. However, the executive secretary of the ICZN at the time, Philip Tubbs, did not consider the petition to be admissible, concluding that the term of Scrotum was published merely as a label for an illustration, and the valid creation of a new name was likely never even intended on Brooke's part, thus ending the saga of Scrotum Humanum. Thanks for watching this more unique video of mine on the early days of paleontology and taxonomy. I hope you enjoyed watching and hopefully even got a good laugh after all of this. The early days of paleontology is definitely something I would wish to flesh out at a later date, but until then, I hope you enjoy this e exploration into an earlier time of discovery. Until next time, enjoy all things science. See you later.